our own people. We gonna watch ourselves some Peacemaker 1 by 7 today. Be peaceful by hitting that like button. Be vigilant by subscribing and clicking that bell to get notified when our reaction for the next Peacemaker is up. Full length watch along as we sync up with the time code with us on Peacemaker over at our Patreon page. Become a super eject today by checking out everything over there. Lastly, thank you to the boys at Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Where do you see my. Backstory. Into rock and roll forever, and tongue kiss hot babes and smoke pot all day. Yeah! 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 yeah. Hey, hey, me, yeah, me too, do that. Let's go, Ben's right here. Let's go, let your money talk. Come on. Look at that mullet. No kicking, no biting, no grabbing. No. Ah, fuck that. No holds barred! Yeah. Uh. Hit it. Wow, that is sick. Don't be a faggot! Get in there and hit it! Who needs cockfighting? Disturbing. Come on, Chris! You hit like a girl! They had them bare knuckle box. Oh. Oh. oh, that is oh. messed up. Jeez. They caused him some brain trauma. You dumb fuck! You killed your brother! Oh, you asshole. You made them fight and made money off of it. In there? That is so disturbing. Do you really wanna, do you really wanna taste <sighs> What a transition. I now understand this intro. <laughs> the subtle tragedy of it, yeah. She probably planted that diary in my trailer. I knew I couldn't trust these people. Who the fuck's Judo Master? Judo Master's oh, supposed shit. to be there? Fuck it. Can't worry about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the Peacemaker helmets programmed in. These ones at the police station, they must have been confiscated yesterday. But these ones, that's got to be Christian. God damn it. Diary is fake? Of course it's a fake. If I was going to write a diary, it wouldn't be a diary. It'd be a fucking journal. <laughs> Vigilante and me might as well get this done before they find us. What done? Kill this fucking cow. We are? Cool. No. A cow? Uh, maybe it's an alien cow. You did it, didn't you? Waller sent you here for this express purpose. Did what? Planted a diary in Peacemaker's trailer. Yes. Wow. I don't want to be here no more. So I'm leaving. Well, then why the fuck did you even come? Because I lost my job and my mother offered me this one. Your mother? Yes. Oh, it's all coming out. Holy fuck, your mother is Amanda Waller? Hey, you need to get out of here. She's Waller's daughter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> How have you not seen Boondock Saints? It's a classic. Vigilante. Jesus. <laughs> Good always off to me like it charms. <laughs> I love it. Do your worst, Judo Master. Are you guys being a little nonchalant about all this? Economos, are you insinuating there is a wrong time and a right time to rock? <laughs> I feel like Economos is gonna die. Yeah, I'm a, now that you said that, I can feel it. They're on 395 North. About past the exit to Contarinus Road. I've got eyes. God. Whoa. Ooh, God this know. Nazi should not be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I want an action figure? I'm not ready for it. Someone's gonna take the bolt. Oh. Ah. No, no, no. Dad? Oh, fuck. <laughs> what are you doing? What I should have done long ago. Oh, buddy. Oh, oh my god. That's it, man. We gotta go. Come on, get up. As long as Eagly makes it out, man. There's no wrong time to rock. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. Ow. You <laughs> left your keys in the car. What? I was rushing. <laughs> <laughs> an oh asshole, God. man. You're an asshole. So what do you want to do now? You want to go to the club? Yeah. Or... Whoa. Oh, oh my God. Shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what's up. Damn. 
Oh, damn. Open up, police! No. Oh, <laughs> running like a spaz. Let's go. What animals it attached to? <laughs> Good call. The fucking raccoons are hardcore, man. <laughs> wasn't exactly inconsistent with what I imagined would happen if a man just walked up and grabbed a wild raccoon. <laughs> no, he's got a concussion. Uh, oh. I'm proud to have had you on my team. Finish the job. Run! Kill the <laughs> How do you know about the cow? Nothing you can do will oh. make me. Ah. Oh no, Murd. You can no blow. You could have just joined us. Nah, no, nah, Murd's officially gone. You murdered him. The alternative was what? Without him, his outfit will have no chance of stopping us. Two clowns in costumes and a couple of rejects. Two clowns in costumes, rejects? Sounds like yeah. the devil's rejects. <laughs> he he dead. Ooh. Aww. Oh. No. Wow. Oh. Oh, that's really sad. Ah, oh. Ding dong, bitches! <laughs> oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me right now. Ouch! Oh. 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 Whoa! Damn, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh. I love hotel fights since. <laughs> Dope, dope, dumb shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ooh, in the heart. Out of the roof. Get him everywhere, jeez. That was a better fight than when Peacemaker fought Judo Master. Man. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> My asshole! What the fuck, dude? What the fuck's wrong with your bird? Daddy, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> How did they find you guys anyway? He put a GPS tracking device in Peacemaker's helmet. What? Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh no. I didn't know. I thought no. they were expensive. No. Oh, I gotta be so fucking bad. Oh. No, Eagly, get back in the car. John, can you get him in the car? Sure, I can no. babysit. No. Eagly better not, I swear to God. Get in the car. Oh, Jesus. He's not listening. Get back in the car and crinkle a bag or something. I'll think you have chips. Oh. Who? <sighs> oh, my God. Jeez. <sighs> yum, yum. <laughs> Peacemaker running from Nazis. Ow! Oh. The camera work is so physical in this episode. What are you doing? They're here. Why the fuck are your pants all the way down? <laughs> Clothes are touching my butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Live eagerly, please. Come on, eagerly. No, 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 no. I'm a piece of shit for listening to you for 
for all those years. I'm a piece of shit for not killing you in your sleep. You hit like a girl. <laughs> oh, a luger, no less. I knew you couldn't do it, you faggot. Because I control you. Whether or not I kill you, you'll never be able to get the fuck away from me. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. It's like the more messed up version of Civil War. Oh, wow. I'm not supposed to be here. That's why I was packing up. I just want to do whatever job I need to. We're telling right from wrong ain't advanced calculus. <sighs> because you're good at the job. And because we need every hand on deck to try to go kill this cow. <laughs> It's impossible. We couldn't even get there in time. Is this cow like a Starro level kind of cow? It's gotta be. <laughs> hey, John. Pause. Oh my God, is there a chance? There's gotta be a chance. Don't tease me, I swear to God. What's going on? Dr. Hurwitz kindly stitched up Eagly and Vigilante's being a total freak. Dude, they saw us. Peacemaker and I were wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I never should have left him in my father's garage for four years when I went to prison. I should have found somebody better to take care of him. Like an ugly girl who was desperate for love and would have done anything I wanted when I was locked up. And, you know, I could have just broke up with her the moment I got out. <laughs> and I was a bad friend, eagerly. The only one besides Keith that ever loved me for real. Please, God, don't do anything you want. Just please. Aww. Keep equally alive. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> you know you're so happy to see me today, wrap his wings around me and hug me. An eagle hugged you. Oh yeah. Yeah, I call bullshit on that. You don't want to believe in miracles, that's on you. <laughs> Take that selfie. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Miracles. Uh, babe, I just saw an eagle hug a human. <laughs> <laughs> With everything going on. <laughs> How do we do this without Mern? We have someone else that we can trust to lead us. Me? No. <laughs> Aww, you got this, Harcourt. They'll do what they can to move the cow out before we get there. How? According to what Ads and I overheard, teleportation. Damn. Whoa. Go in there and we kick ass like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. They get slaughtered at the end of that film. <laughs> Freeze frame when we hear a bunch of bullets. That doesn't mean they died. Yes, it does. I don't think so. I think they jumped over those bullets right after that freeze frame. Just like the Devil's Rejects. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Hell yeah. Hashtag me too. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No. Is like a star a little? That's a big baby cow. That's not like Area 51 shit right there. No? <laughs> Starship Troopers. Yeah. <laughs> Judo master. I guess he's back at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Just left him there. What's the post credits gonna be? More prayers? That's as good a guess as any. Or something with vigilante and the ribbon at the vet place. Cleanliness is next to godliness, and God knows I'm close to him. Blood. That's what you want to see. <laughs> if you're not seeing any blood, you're not scrubbing hard enough. Oh. Start at the bottom. This guy's laughing. Your way up. <laughs> Keep going a little higher. <laughs> swing the hips. <laughs> when you're drawing especially, it's important to swing the hips. And we're finished and now. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Moses, as well. Wild and emotional. 
for show. Eagly lives. Eagly. Eagly lives. Eagly. Oh man. Made it. No, no previews. No. Okay. <sighs> Trailer reactors ain't watching trailers. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird watching a show that you know is not going to get Golden Globe nominations, but should. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good one, call. It's one of those shows, right? Yeah. It's so good. It's mm -hmm. so good. Like, it just keeps getting better and maintains the humor. Like, it's, it, sometimes I think, like, okay, this is going to be the episode where we're, like, just serious. <laughs> this is the serious, intense one. And while there, there's so much, you know, intensity in this one, like, this one, like, brought me to tears. I was on the edge of my seat. I was freaking laughing. And I was like, man, this is like the whole package right here. Mm -hmm. I'm really digging it so much. And John Cena's performance is so strong. I I just can't, I, like, I, I don't know why I never suspected this level of acting talent that the guy has. I guess it really just depends on the right director or character or whatever. Or yeah. maybe he's always been this talented and I just had no clue because he is phenomenal here, man. Um, pushed to the lengths. I think it's interesting how they start off with the brother death where you explain what happened with Keith. And, you know, like the way they did those flashbacks before, those little glimpses of the traumatic hauntings of that, uh, that like core memory for Chris, it constantly seemed like, okay, maybe they're just like roughhousing or messing around. And then by an accident, he, he killed him. Like something purely unintentional where he, he was, where Chris was out of line as a kid. And then you see this flashback and you're like, dude, yeah, this guy freaking, this Augie deserves to die. <laughs> this guy is the worst. <laughs> he already was the worst. And then he just got worse than the worst in this moment. Like you see him placing the bets and he's he, like, exploiting his children's playtime and put pitting them against each other and then still walks out blaming Chris for what happened. Uh, it is so absurd and like just horrifying, absolutely horrifying. And this whole time we've been seeing these flashbacks are like, oh, the weight of Keith, that his death falls on Chris's shoulders because he feels personally responsible for it. And the way they've made this arc where after Eagly, his best friend, it looks like he's been killed uh, by his own dad. It comes out. He starts unleashing his rage, everything underneath the surface, and he's you know just pouring it all on him. Like it was your fault. It's your response. It was it's his fault. And it is like a. It really did feel like Civil War. And, you know, he's got like an Iron Man like red suit. Yeah. Helmet off. He's yeah. beating him. He's on top of him. The the American symbol is mm -hmm. on top. You know, ready to kill him. Instead, they just follow through with someone actually dying. Um, it was it was really uh, it was really fascinating. And then yeah, of course, when he kills him, he's gonna be brought to tears because it's still his father and he still loved him. And, uh, in spite of all this. Uh, meanwhile, Red Dragon be looking like the coolest mofo ever. <laughs> so it's gonna say, like, wow, you know, he's he's pretty. He's got like this, uh, like '90s, 2000s, like cheese about, and it feels intentional because he's a former. I don't he's know the right words hero, but the former. He's a former uh, costumed super person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it feels like appropriate to have it feel like it's from an earlier era yeah. because it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I loved it. I, I, I loved the way they handled that that arc there. Mm -hmm. It's strong stuff. Yeah, and it was like the right size because you know the white dragon suit has these like blasts and this like rocket ability built in, but it's not so much that you can't believe that Chris might have a chance against him. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, like th this episode, like you said, it was firing on all cylinders and it did everything the show does across the board really well all in one package, which was the most impressive to me. Like you said, you laugh, you cry, you know, you're, you're tense, you're, you're having fun. And sometimes all of those things are having, are happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it really is credit to the, I, I wonder if maybe it's just because Dwayne Johnson has such 
a sort of mold in being the wrestler turned actor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that I almost sometimes wonder if that contributes to the sort of everyone being surprised when John Cena has the chops. Because I feel like at this point you could argue that John Cena is maybe a better emotional actor than Dwayne Johnson is in certain cases and certain varieties of scenes. And I, I love like none of this would work if that wasn't true, or it wouldn't work as well as it does if that wasn't true. Uh, because yeah, this guy who is such a buffoon and such a joke in certain ways is is also really, really tortured in a way that's very tangible and in a way that I, I just loved what they were able to do with this episode mm -hmm. because so much plot happened, but also I feel like we got the most amount of emotional resonance we've had so far. This is probably my favorite episode of the season up to this point. Uh, for for all those reasons, and yeah, even though you know we've only spent one season with these characters as of now, and even though Augie is you know a prominent character, he's not like the most prominent character. And there are ways in which I could imagine this feeling like, oh damn, you know they already killed him off, but this felt very you know it, it felt like the story of how this guy died <laughs> not just a story about how he could have died you know like the the mm. showdown between them felt so visceral and so personal and that you know is most realized between Augie and Chris but it's throughout the episode with a lot of characters I mean I feel like these intense sort of singular interpersonal moments really pinned the episode together and you see that with obviously Chris and Augie but also with Adebayo and, and, uh, and Harcourt and even I mean even uh, 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 that moment shared unknowingly between her and Chris you know as, as Chris is like crying over eagerly and praying to God like <coughs> yeah there's so many uh, really great character beats amid all the action and the chaos. Well, this was the revelatory episode where you see arcs. Mm -hmm. This is where the arcs come full circle. Mm -hmm. Harcourt is, you know, the the way she's spewing her blurred lines of what lives matter and what lives don't when she's arguing with Adebayo. And you're starting to see that, like, you know, she really does care about Chris. She's spouting stuff like he was your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, also her saying he's my friend too, and then at a bio, uh, getting to see some of when she's getting defensive, you're like, oh, there's some of the Wallers coming out in her in this moment. You know, where she's trying to justify her actions, or like, here's why you shouldn't get on my ass about this. Like this, this choice made sense mm -hmm. at the time. Clearly, you know, um, for not knowing the actress's name, but her. Um, her performance was indicating that this is clearly a defense mechanism and not a not like this is what she really thinks whereas like with Waller it really seems like Waller thinks that way yeah where her she doesn't uh, agree with her mom and she's just trying to please <laughs> so you know I think her performance is so strong so you have this like exploration and 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 you know even with it but by the end with Adebayo with realizing where she belongs she like chooses to stay on this but she has totally an out where she can just go home mm -hmm. but she's choosing to stay on this mission for something bigger than a job and uh, same thing with Harcourt elevating to the position of leader Mern, you really see his true intent here of like it's he already revealed it but clearly willing to die and be like you guys carry on the mission it seemed like he communicates something like kind of telepathically or some shit mm -hmm. to Harcourt when uh, when when Harcourt was blowing the butterfly in her hand yeah and um not so I mean vigilante he's vigilante yeah <laughs> <laughs> he was proven right yeah. but John uh for Chris you know even very symbolically with the peacemaker helmet like literally this whole show has started off with Peacemaker. Here's who he is. Here's who you think he is. Mm -hmm. Now let's strip away who's the man underneath the mask. Now you get to this episode where literally the mask is removed. Yeah. This 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 physical thing that is so connected, so tethered to you know uh, his dad. He literally gets the helmets from his father, mm -hmm. and now that's removed. That's gone now. And I think that's such an interesting choice, and that's such a key keystone part of the Peacemaker yeah. costume and the image of yeah. a Peacemaker. But, uh, it's a, but it's a rich choice. Yeah. yeah. And, and Economos, uh, even he, like, he was just a guy behind the computer. Now he just gets out in the field and gets dirty. You gotta take out all them Nazis, you know? It was a, it was a really oh, rewarding moment. Quite. Uh, yeah, I like the relationship that's more with Harcourt out of bio and Harcourt's becoming more sensitive. She even makes the choice with the 
that's of <laughs> because normally you saw an episode where she did just often an innocent person because her identities were compromised and now here she decides not to and so as you're seeing all these like great arcs in here and then setting up for like the big mission now it's just about will episode eight stick this episode's happening yeah well episode eight it stick the landing ultimately and uh, i i feel like it will it do you see with the with the big creature at the end you're like okay this is feeling more like the suicide squad spinoff now yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah before mm -hmm. you're like okay you got a, a team of misfits here who don't really know how to work together the best mm -hmm. and now they they they're choosing to stay together mm -hmm. in spite of all the odds being stacked against them, against an alien threat, <laughs> and this alien that they got to kill is massive, yeah, and they got very well protected. And they got a horde of these beings that they got to take care of too. And yeah, it's, it, you're like, okay, I see some of the more there's the similarities now, more like this now. Now this is feeling like the Suicide Squad spinoff, yeah. which is good. It was fine, you know. I never, I, I never really thought about it uh, in that regard, and I, I, I don't mind it at all. And fucking Judo Master, John. Talk about Judo, Judo Master. Judo Master was badass. And I mean, the, I, I love the almost comic strip quality Judo Master has had throughout this series, minus the introduction. You know, we, we meet him with Goff, so he's a henchman, and that makes sense. But from here, it's like they just kind of have to keep him contained. And I agree that that fight scene in the hotel room was, I think, one of the standouts for the season. And I think it did actually yeah. outstrip the one between him and Chris because... In the 2000s, we were getting like a lot of... Like those hotel fight scenes. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, especially like, in the advent of like Jason Bourne movies yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's been a while since we got a fight scene like that where you're just like, oh, it's brutal. They're using the items around them. They're thrashing into stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anytime someone like breaks a sink or a toilet, yeah. you're like, oh yeah, this is a nasty, like rough and tumble fight scene. And and you know throughout. It's especially apparent in the Judo Master scenes, even outside the convenience story where he whips those two guys' asses. Like, the, the camera work in this episode was so visceral, and you'd have things, it's like shots where it feels like the camera is right in the action or, or gets, you know, hit with, you know, debris and stuff like that. And yeah, it's like, it's so so physical and so pulpy and so violent but in a very in a way that doesn't break the fun like again that's one of the charms of james gunn is like it is bone crunching and gross in certain respects or or, or just cringeworthy in certain respects but also uh is just so cool and i love how like out of all these characters that have been so fleshed out, Judo Master has remained a complete constant every time we have seen. He's got his yeah. snacks, he doesn't say much, he's got an attitude, and he'll kick your ass. And that's, mm. that's it, that's that character. And I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up one more time before the season's over, or or maybe in like the, the maybe like some kind of weasel style stinger, yeah. you know, at the end of the finale episode. Now, saving the best part for last. Mm. Eagly. Eagly. Holy balls, man. Since Made the it. first episode, I've been like, that eagle's gonna die, isn't it? I'm holding on. So, so worried. And then this episode made me go, Sh like, I, when I was first thinking, I feel like Economos is gonna die. My real thought <laughs> was, I'm feeling Eagly's gonna die, but I don't want to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so you sacrificed Economos. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll take anyone before Eagly. And then it just started seeming like they were really hinting towards it. You know, Jay, like, clearly they're not afraid to kill off animals mm -hmm. uh, and shit like this. And, and James Gunn's not afraid to kill off animals in his projects. So and in his private life. Private life. <laughs> killing animals killing left and right. Yeah. I was surprised they didn't do anything to the raccoon when they found the helmet. So, no, I thought they were going to shoot the rack. Yeah, I thought they were going to make it. I, I I appreciate the restraint on those things. <laughs> but yeah, it's clever how they how it's all tied in. It's yeah. neat because even though they swap out directors like Brad Anderson, Mr. Anderson, Brad Anderson. directed this episode, but James Gunn wrote every one of them. So it's cool when you could see how connected all these things are like establishing in the last episode when Eagly's in the field and like taking out some some of them cops yeah. so it's like okay yeah this isn't some random thing like if they was just introducing this episode it'd be like what the fuck Eagly? Yeah. <laughs> like we were doing this before you know and so like you're just putting an excuse here to get him in this this perilous situation mm -hmm. so yeah you have that where he's like taking out some of the kkk kind of guys 
I think they were gonna have like a truck hit him or something. I saw that when he's just out on the road. Yeah, yeah I was like, trying, is it, or, are they just gonna shoot him? Yeah, yeah. It just they they really the way they, they played with the audience. They, like, they, they played they it like a horror. They movie. kept capturing him and this guy like they're following him. And hold on, we're uploading something simultaneously. Can you just tap that, John? Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I thought that they were uh, they were gonna kill him off, but then that scene when he is in the vet is like that's that's so encompassing of everything of what makes this show so good you have the chris character he's saying shit sincerely and it's funny but then you're also crying <laughs> uh, or at least i was like i was I, really yeah. yeah i was fucking it was getting to me and then and then to have that full circle moment where she sees it like i like the use of the flashback like that was really good the, I, yeah, <laughs> <absolutely>. <laughs> yeah sometimes i show shows and movies I'm like we don't need the flashback but the use of the flashback helped enhance the humor it was moving in this like angelic way yeah and well yeah because it's, it's not for exposition no no yeah <laughs> yeah it's almost an exposition free flashback in a sense. I mean, it does function to remind you, but yeah. No, it, it, it felt like a cinematic choice of a flashback. Um, Eagly, man. He's my man. Fucking Eagle. I hope this isn't some mislead. We're just first next, next episode. Just fucking first moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As it stands, man, this is uh, this, this is truly awesome. Excellent. What a, what a way to kick off 2022 with this Excellent. show. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, I feel like it's a pretty appreciated gem. It's just not available in some countries right now, so that's why. Yeah, yeah, want, but they say it. it's uh, it's HBO's number one show right now, so. You know what else they got? Euphoria. I'm sorry, Euphoria's not number one. Oh, yeah. I mean, Euphoria mean, be number one? Maybe it'll take the crown back once Peacemaker finishes up next week. I, I was surprised to hear that, too, because... Yeah, like, when did you hear that? Like, like uh, this past week, people were talking about it. Because at first, it's a couple beating of, out euphoria? A couple of weeks ago, I was seeing, not from, like, the reputable sources, but I was seeing, like, YouTube videos about, like, ah, oh, man, Peacemaker's failing because of wokeness. And then, like a, like, a week later, then I started seeing, like, other places, like Variety being, like, Peacemaker is, like the hot top rated show maybe maybe it's that i don't know if it's like a difference in like how people have rated it versus viewership but it, it was pitched as being their top show right now it was pitched as being more views than boba fett yeah i think that changed when a, a certain character appeared <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's been doing really really well from what i understand i mean euphoria is a juggernaut yeah <laughs> but this maybe has the edge because it's the first season i don't know all right guys well thank you so much for being here what did you think about this episode leave your thoughts down below you can subscribe leave a like and uh last but not least do a patreon <laughs> Anissa Oliva. Anissa, you know what? Screw jokes. You've been amazing. <laughs> you're, you're just like a total gem. You asked for nothing from us. <laughs> you've been so loyal to us for so long. So supportive. And you've also gone way above and beyond for us. And who, who, more ways. I've lost, sincerely, I've lost so much track mm -hmm. of just how far you've gone above and beyond for us. <laughs> so... Just know you're always in my mind and heart. You matter so much to me. And you're just one of the coolest motherfuckers I've ever met. <laughs> That's a good way to put that. You are super cool. And we do not deserve your love. Yeah. You're the, you're, you're the bomb.com. And uh, I love you. And it is one of my life's goals to meet you one day. In person. Talk to on the phone. Talk to on... Various video chats. Yeah, it's <laughs> but... Yeah, one day in person, it'll happen. Thank you so much for remaining loyal to us this entire time. You rock.